See, we're going to start off uh, throwing top water this morning. And right now, we have the best of the best of every possibility. We got a little bit of top on the water coming in. We've got a point here. It's going to run out here into a saddle that the spots really love. It's going to come right back here. Yeah. It's going to hit a little hump out here. Well, about 80 yards or so, and then it's got a underwater. Uh, ridge that runs out there another couple hundred yards so everything that the spots really love we have right here in this one little spot plus we've got a little bit of wind you couldn't ask for any better conditions we're going to start off this morning throwing the zero spook color wise i like the blues the white bottoms uh, a lot of people like the chartreuses, greens, whites with red heads. And I don't think it really matters. Maybe sometimes it does, depending on sun. But I think it's whatever you throw the most is what you're going to catch the most fish with. Whatever you have the most confidence in, that's what you want to use. Right now we're starting up in the second second week of June or so right in there. Uh, the lake is going down approximately oh six, eight inches a day, so we got falling water. Uh, everything we're going to be fishing today is going to be outside points. The longer, the flatter, the better. Uh, the big spots, I believe, majority of them spawn on the outside main body points. The fish that are inside now, majority of them are done, so they're going to pull out, and with the lake dropping, they're definitely going to pull out a little quicker than normal. these big spots and stuff when they get done spawning there they'll usually spawn in 15 to 25 feet of water sure you'll see them up shallower but the bigger ones are out there a little bit deeper first thing in the morning they might be up a little but overall they're going to be spawn out there in that deeper water and then when they get done they're just going to go out there a little bit further and suspend to recoup for a while and they could be out there over 80 feet of water but they themselves might only be in 20 feet of water so you've got to go out there and look over the ends of those points. No matter how far that goes out there, you could be out there three, four, five hundred yards in the lake and still be in a hundred feet of water, maybe even less. But those spots will be out there somewhere too, so you've got to kind of look at it all. It's just a matter of staying with it. If you can look back, we're probably probably a hundred yards out. But believe it or not, we're only in nine feet of water too. That was a good fish. Dang it. Nine times out of ten, you miss them the first time, you're not going to get them.
Yeah, we missed that one fish. Been metering quite a few fish down here, so I'll throw a worm a couple casts, see what happens. Nothing happens. We're gonna keep on with the top water, see if we can catch a good one. I'm metering a lot of fish to spin it up in the upper part of the water column, but right now they're just not interested. Probably a lot of times it's a timing thing. It doesn't happen first thing in the morning. It could be at nine o'clock or ten o'clock. That's kind of part of the game. You got to figure out when they're going to be on the bite. I'm sure before it's over with, we'll catch some pretty good ones on top water. Now this point here we're fishing, we're doing it a lot different. We did the last one. The last one we started on the inside, worked our way out into deep water. This time I'm starting in deep water and working my way back in. Just for something a little bit different. Right now we're in 110 feet. Believe it or not, I'm metering fish out here and they're about 15 feet deep. This is just another long point, runs out here about another, from what you can see over there, about another 70, 80 yards. And it abruptly just drops straight off. And it's got a little real rocky ridge on the end of it. Those fish will usually hang right on the top of that, suspended over the top of it. There he is, just a real small fish. Not real big, but it's a start. That's a good one. All I need He's not that good. I thought he was a lot better than that. Something sweet. I'll hook him a little bit. Just a simple reminder, baby. A little bit better. Not the biggest in the lake, but he's getting there. Got a lot more heavier rock on it. A little bit steeper. It still runs out there quite a ways, but it drops off a little bit faster. It's a little bit different than what we have in fishing, but the most important thing about the whole thing is on the far side of it, it's fairly flat. On this side, I mean, it drops right straight off into heavier rock. So if they're spawning up on that other side of it, they got easy access to deep water so they can just kind of hang on the edge of it. And if they need to escape, I mean, they're right there. They don't have to move very far and they're in deep water. If they want to come up on the shallows. They don't have very far to travel to get there either. Right now, mostly I've been working it over the deep side of it. I think I just fouled it up a little bit. There wasn't nothing on the deep side, so I'll cast clear across it to the shallower side and bring it all the way across and see if they might be up a little bit shallower. Right now, the fish have got our number. It's 
to have us figuring them out. They got us figured out. Small fish, I think. You don't play for work again. And I feel you in the dark. Too bad. When the fire is burning, baby. You always are the spark. You're not like any other, baby. And I hope we never fall. Getting a little bit better. Too bad I'd take him. This point here we're fishing. We got a little point here and it comes back out in the saddle. It goes out to a little hump out there that's just barely starting to come out of water. And beyond that hump, it drops down into a real long, long point again. That's where they should be. Now, quite often I'm asked, you know, what kind of rods to use for your topwaters and everything. And basically, it's a personal choice. I use all St. Croix rods, and I used to use glass, and I think glass is a great rod, and I still use glass quite a bit for certain stuff every now and again but with the technology they have now they've really come along very well and they've made some rods that are super light and graphite and uh, moderate action rods you get a lot of bend out of them personally I like light rods the medium light rods are medium the one I'm using today is a premier medium light and a moderate action and in your hand, physical weight is super light. It's a lot lighter than glass. You can throw it all day long and hardly even know you have it. But on the other hand, it still has a lot of power to do whatever you need to do with the fish. But also, it has a light tip, so you don't have to work it so hard to make your bait do what you want to do with it. But it all comes down to personal preference. Whatever you like, you know, that's what you should use, not what somebody wants to talk you into using. You know, fishing anymore is kind of got like golf. There's a golf club for everything everything you do out there. Fishing's kind of got the same way. In a way, believe it or not, I think it's kind of gotten out of hand a little bit. It's good for the manufacturers, but it sure confuses the fishermen. I know the manufacturers probably don't want to hear that. But they make a rod for just about anything you want to do. No it's just amazing. Best thing to do is just buy the very, very best rod that your money can buy and go from there because they all work. You get up in the higher end rods, I guarantee you're going to have a good rod. My per personal preference is the St. Croix. I've had them for quite a few years. I've used a lot of other rods and I think they're one of the best on the market, if not the best. Sounds like somebody up in the tree is also hungry. <clears throat> this point here we're fishing. It's a little bit different structurally and everything or physically it's the same, just about the same as everything we have been fishing. But the main difference is it's back further inside a big, big cove, but it's separating two coves so it's the main point that goes out in the lake. And this one runs way out there, so everything that's been spawning on the insides are gonna start pulling out, and a lot of them will pull out on this, and they'll stack out on the end of this one. There's a hump out here about another 150 yards or so, and it can just be unbelievable. 
Hopefully the fish are active enough. We should get a couple good ones off it. Just the positioning of it makes it a good one because it's everything that moves out, unless they move out on the outside ones, they're just going to automatically move out on this one here. Okay, from the point back there when we first started fishing, we're probably 100 yards out. It dropped down into 60 feet of water. Now we're coming back up again. Now we're in 27. What kind of surprises me that we haven't seen this morning. Usually when you have a fish come up, they're usually in packs this time of year, and I haven't seen that. They've all been singles. That's a little bit different for some reason. You see it a lot in the fall, I mean a bunch, but you also see it this time of year too. Oh, that was a pretty good one right there. Darn it. See that one? Yeah. That made the heart thump a little bit. That was a decent fish. Please don't tell me, baby. More than I want to some reason they're acting a little bit lethargic. Too bad. Kind of changed tactics here a little bit. We'll go back to top water here in a little while, but I just wanted to catch a few fish on worms. Not too bad of a spot right there. If you look out there in the water, look at those big shad that, that it stood up. That's a pretty good sized bait down there. Yeah, we both done some time, baby. Go over here and grab it. Yeah, here's two of the pretty good size uh, redfin shad that he spit up on the way up. Hungry little guy. Yeah, 
They're all getting a little bit better. Keep going, we're going to catch a big one. This spook here I'm using, I've been using it for years. I mean, literally years. I've had it for a long, long time. It's not a regular stock one. It's been modified a little bit. Get the hooks undone here. Just your plain old regular Zara Spook, except they put a little bit bigger split rings on it. They put a split ring up on front. I like using split rings. Got a red hook in the front. And just a regular number two, I changed the hooks all out and I went to twos. And in the back I got a feather with a two also. All hooks are twos, but I just put that red one in front. It seems to, uh, the fisher might be a little bit more lethargic, might get a little reaction strike out of him, make it look like maybe the fish might be bleed, bleeding around the gills or something. But it's pretty well scarred up as you can see. I've used it for a long time. I got another one in there I've actually used longer that I don't use unless I use it in a tournament because it's one of my very favorites and it's worn almost all the way through the plastics the way the hooks come up and swish around it and everything. It's pretty wore out. They work. Right now we switched over to worms. I'm doing more worms now intermittent as the sun's coming up. I'm using a six pound test line, a quarter, little eight ounce dart head with a six inch Mojave Oxblood worm made by uh, Mother's Finest Custom Hand Poured Worms. I'm using a seven foot medium elite St. Croix rod. And the whole setup seems to work very well. Using light line, uh, Shasta right now, it's, uh, water clarity is fairly clear. Uh, you can see almost 20 feet in some areas. Right where we are now, it's probably 15 feet or so. This little worm here has been <clears throat> really, really, really been working well for the last three or four months, even six months or so. And a lot of tournaments went on it up here. I'm very fortunate, a very, very good friend of mine I've known since childhood days, and his name is Arnold Fancelli. He's the one that's uh, making these worms for, uh, he owns Mother's Finest Custom Worms. If it wasn't for him, I'd be uh, worm broke. He always has the worms that I need when I need them. Maybe like a little bit better fish, but it's kind of hard to tell. Not just thinks he's big. Too bad. 
just can't be without. Got on a mother's finest, Mojave Oxblood. You drive me crazy. Works every time. Make me do things that I don't always do. You make me humble. Make me stumble, baby. Make me think only you. Oh boy, there's a nice one underneath it. You better Two of them. Never fails, you always get the little one on the bunch. You oh, ain't no You Real long, not a lot of weight, not real fat. A little spawned out female. Bad. Come on, eat it. Come on. A lot of people don't understand. I mean, that fish hit it four times, even though we didn't catch it. If you would have stopped it, he would have never came back. As long as you keep moving it, he'll come back and try to eat it. And there's two reasons. If he's hungry, he's definitely going to eat it. But the spots are so aggressive, and if they're not hungry, they'll just come up and they want to kill it. So if you go ahead and stop it, they think they've done their job and they'll just go ahead and leave. But if you keep moving it, they'll keep attacking it, you know, and try to kill it. So eventually, hopefully, you'll catch it. At that time, that fish hit it four different times, and we still never caught it. So always remember, you know, always keep your bait moving. Try not to jerk it away from them. Just keep it going. Oh, look at that big one underneath it. Look at that big one underneath it. Look at those fish. See them all down there? Holy cow. Again, you catch the little one. That's the story of my life. Did you see those? Man. Dang it. That's what we like to see, the big old pods. You little fart. In the right place, doing the right thing, just not getting the right fish. Another little one. Not that little. Still doesn't want to come in. Another good old Shasta spot. One thing about Shasta, Shasta has plenty and plenty and plenty of these. A lot of people that come from down south that don't get bit in a lot of their lakes, you know, they might get seven, eight, nine, ten bites a day where you can catch 50 on Shasta. They get kind of caught up in these fish. These fish are just clones. You got to figure out how to get bigger ones than these because there are just so many of them. <laughs> 